Trains in the United Kingdom often get a bad reputation for late running, disruption and cancellations. When these delays do happen, it often causes more delays to arise than other services. But why does this happen? And what, if anything, can be done about it? As usual, if you are new here, first of all welcome to my channel. If you enjoyed the video, check out my other videos and consider subscribing or joining my channel. There are many causes of delays, trespassers, shortage of train crew, animals on the line, weather, rail adhesion, all those usual ones, and then some less common ones like, oh right, maybe not that. But how do all of these issues actually cause the delays? Well, obviously, if there's people or animals on the track, you can't run trains as it's unsafe. Likewise, if there's no driver or guard to operate the train, or they are in the wrong place, the train can't run either. Weather can also do the same. If there's snow on the track, it will either freeze electrical equipment like the third rail, which will delay trains, or it will block the line altogether and prevent trains running. This is all pretty obvious. I don't think you're watching this video for me to tell you things you know already. So let me explain how these initial delays cause chaos across the network. The UK's railway network is basically spaghetti. We are a pretty small island with a high population density, meaning that there is a lot of people wanting to travel by train. As the population grew, more and more railways were built, creating complex junctions where lines meet, such as in Crewe and in Manchester. We are also home to many obstacles, such as rivers, mountains, pre-existing buildings, all of which the engineers had to work around when building the network. This has caused some pretty impressive infrastructure to be built, such as the fourth bridge in Scotland, the Castlefield Corridor in Manchester, and the Severn Tunnel, linking England and Wales. These all carry the railway over or under obstacles, but they were all built in the Victorian era, meaning that they are well over 100 years old now. Old infrastructure often isn't able to handle the capacity required of a railway in 2025. After all, the population of the UK has more than doubled since 1900, meaning that more trains are squeezed into key routes. If the trains ran on time every day with no errors, it wouldn't cause too much of a problem, as the timetable in theory gives trains enough time at a certain slot to use the lines. But, like any railway, stuff happens. Whether it be bad weather or trespassers, it ultimately causes a delay. If the delay happens on a service on a minor route, it might seem like it won't cause too many problems, but it can cause a chain reaction of delays across the network. For example, the 0706 East Midlands Railway service from Skegness to Nottingham is a relatively minor local service. Let's say there are sheep on the line in deep this dark as Nottinghamshire, between Bingham and Radcliffe, two stations you've probably never heard of. This will cause the train to have to wait for the sheep to be moved, taking, let's say, half an hour. In this time, the long distance express service from Norwich to Liverpool that follows 10 minutes later will catch up and get stuck behind. This will cause an at least half an hour delay for the rest of its journey from Nottingham to Liverpool Lime Street. This is obviously annoying for the passengers on the service who are stuck and have to wait, but it's arguably even more annoying for all of the other services that are going to get delayed as a result of it. For example, if it maintains its delay and leaves Sheffield 34 minutes late at 11.17, the northern service from Sheffield to Manchester, which feels like it serves every village in Derbyshire, scheduled at 11.15, will depart first. As there's nowhere for the express train to Liverpool to overtake, the slow train will hold the Liverpool train up even more, adding to the delay. Where it gets even worse is in Manchester. If the train is now 40 plus minutes late, it will have to squeeze its way onto the Castlefield Corridor, one of the most congested lines in the country, which runs through central Manchester. This section contains many junctions and only one track in each direction, causing other services to become late, including other long-distance express trains like the Manchester Airport to Edinburgh Trans Pennine Express service. If this service gets delayed, it will cause a similar knock-on effect to happen on the West Coast Main Line, which it joins later in its service, one of the key routes in the whole of the UK. Realistically, if the EMR train reached Manchester 40 plus minutes late, it would probably be terminated at Manchester Piccadilly to ensure that it starts its return service to Norwich on time. This is good for the timetable, but it's very annoying for passengers on the service, as anyone going to stations between Manchester and Liverpool will have to change for another train at Manchester Piccadilly. If you are in a wheelchair or have heavy luggage, 
This can be especially inconvenient, as changing trains at a big station like Manchester Piccadilly can be difficult. But are there any solutions to preventing these delays? In my opinion, without significant investment to basically build a new railway, then not really. As much as the media likes to portray it as, the UK isn't the only country who experiences delays. Germany is famous for having unreliable train services as well, again due to the similar spaghetti-like network that they have. So what I'm basically saying is that no matter what happens, trains in the UK will never all be on time. As much as it won't prevent delays, if a journey you take is delayed by over 15 minutes, you can always claim back delay repay, which can compensate you significantly for the price of your ticket. Thank you for watching today's video. As usual, if you enjoyed it, consider liking the video and commenting. And if you like my content and want to see more, subscribe and even join the channel.